standing at your feet or under your, between you and the seat, there was a, there was a handout. Why don't you get that out real quick? It says, stop voter fraud. Because this is going to be an important response that we need to have from everybody. You know, I I guess I, 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 as I started out this morning, I thought, I want to start by asking you, are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. You know, are you ready to go ahead and take back the values that our party was founded on? Yes. Those values, remember, of, of less government, of lower taxes, of, of protections, of personal liberty? Are you ready to take those back? Yes. You know, I don't know about you, but I remember I was watching the, uh, the, 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 the report that the chairman was given, and it was really interesting, and it kind of reinforced some of the things that I was talking, that I was wanting to talk about. First of all, do you remember those days in, uh, what were they, like December and January and February, and we were trying to decide whether or not, gosh, do I tell my neighbors I'm a Republican or not? <laughs> and then it all changed, didn't it? It changed, and I know it didn't change because I think people got buyer's remorse for what they did got for what they got in November in their election. I think it changed because that what they saw was that the values that they believed in, the values of lower taxes, of personal freedoms, were threatened. And as a result of that, we saw things grow and throughout not only this state but across this nation. You know, and we listen to people. We listen to a parent who all of a sudden was concerned about the quality of education that their child was going to be getting, even though they paid thousands and thousands and thousands of tax dollars to that public school. We heard concerns about a farmer who was watching his farm turn to dust because of bad policies in Washington and Sacramento. We heard from small entrepreneurs trying to figure out how in the world they were going to make the next payroll. And whether or not it was better for them to stay in the business or just go find a government job somewhere. You know, that's the kind of thing that people were responding to. You know, I also have many friends who are contractors. You know, and they're trying to just keep their heads above water right now. And what are they getting from the California state government? They're telling them that they've got to sell all their equipment and buy new stuff. Because they're, the regulations of the state of California need to be met, even though they don't have enough money to even meet their payroll. That's what's happening, and then we have a chance to change that. Now, one of the things I want to remind us all about is people are not going to come to our party simply because we're Republicans. No. That's not going to happen. They will come to our party when we demonstrate to them that we are indeed the party of lower taxes, of less government, and protectors of personal liberty. And we need to be able to demonstrate that. We need to be able to demonstrate that, not talk about it, but demonstrate it day by day by day. Unfortunately, for many years, the electeds, whether in Sacramento or in Washington, were not giving that message. And so when all of a sudden people were concerned, and we saw tea parties across this nation, we saw people rallying around, they didn't automatically turn to the Republican Party because they didn't trust the Republican Party. We need to win their trust back. We need to demonstrate that we are indeed that party of lower taxes, of less government, and the protectors of personal freedoms. That's what we need to stand for. Now we need to stand for some personal projects. We need to do that by supporting candidates who stand for those issues. We need to do that by going out and registering people, not because we just want them to be Republicans, but we want them to help us save this nation and state. And there's a couple of things that we have in our projects that I want to tell you about. One is the issue of voter fraud. You know, we are personally delighted with the timing of the concerns that we have with ACORN. You know, it's about time that people hear about the kinds of corruption that their tax dollars are going to instead of going to meet the needs and concerns of people who actually do have need and are being transferred away from people who are just trying to make their life and trying to make their living. So it's a great time for us to be talking about that. We want to do something very simple here in the state of California. We want to make sure that when people go to vote, they are the right people voting. What a concept. <laughs> you know, if, if you've got to use your photo ID to go get a DVD, check into this hotel or board an airplane, you ought to be able to pull out your ID to show that you're the right person. Woo! Woo! And you know, it's not a stretch to figure out how to do voter fraud in the state of California. You walk up to the polling place, you 
walk up there about eight, about 7.45, you read somebody's name who hasn't showed up, you walk in that voting place, and all you got to say is, that's who I am. They're going to hand you a voting card, and you're going to go ahead and cast a fraudulent vote. And when they do that, they steal your vote. We can stop that. Now, we are set to do that. We were ready to go that. The party endorsed the idea of photo ID. And we're ready to go ahead and do that initiative. And then we ran into the Attorney General. The Attorney General thought that maybe it would be better in his best interest if he gave a, shall we say, an acorn-esque type of title summary. You know, and I'll tell you, it could have been written by an acorn operative. Instead of being able to talk about protecting votes, what's he titled it? Limits votes. Instead of saying that we want to have make sure that people who have, who have indeed registered are the right people voting, what's he, what's he say? He says we prohibit votes. We're going to sue him. We're going to sue him. He has a constitutional obligation to represent all the state of California. And in that response, one of his responsibilities is to make sure that he gives to voters a fair description of what's going to be before them in an initiative. And he failed miserably at this job. And that's why we're going to go ahead and sue him. We have friends like Steve, well, Steve was there a minute ago, Steve Barber. He's and in we, the back, just be cool. Is he back, baby? He's back there. <laughs> uh, and, you know, Chuck Bell. And we announced yesterday our lawsuit. We're going to be filing it next week in Superior Court in Sacramento. Right. And we're going to force the Attorney General to be honest yeah. with the people of California. Good luck. <laughs> we're going to do that. We're going to then resubmit. We're going to get those initiatives back on the streets then in December. And in next November's election, the people of California are going to protect their votes. Now, it's not that they're pro their, their votes for, our, for their ID and requiring ID, but we also believe our service personnel overseas ought to be able to have some extra days for those ballots in our <laughs> Many states do that already, and in California, this is outrageous. We had men and women who were in, in other countries across this world who were protecting our freedoms and operating and protecting and extending the freedoms of others around this world and one out of every three ballots that were cast by overseas personnel were lost. Yeah. Didn't make it to the polling place in the state of California. That's outrageous. And we need to change that. <laughs> now, other people say, you know, we did when, when we moved forward in the state of California with Jessica's law, making it the toughest laws in the state of California against sex offenders, we, did, we, we have the same problem with the legislature. The legislature said no. They said no to these kind of concepts. We had all these concepts before the legislature this year. The idea of photo, uh, photo ID, the idea of getting overseas person, uh, military personnel <laughs> extra time to cast their ballots, the idea of securing absentee ballots. The liberal legislature voted down every one of those, and so that forces us to go to the state of California because they believe differently. And we're going to go ahead and see that when we take that up with them next year. So we want you to help us. You'll find some information on how to do that. We've got a great website. If you're on Facebook, we, got, we, we encourage you to join us on Facebook. I have another little insert in there I just want to point out to you. I am running for the Board of Equalization. There's information about that, too. And I'd love your vote over the Board of Equalization and also to help us with vote safety. Thanks very much.